This is KGW News at Sunrise. Hey, good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Saturday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, we now know more information about an arrest in the murder of a 13-year-old girl. What we've learned about the suspect, who's just a teenager himself. Plus, neighbors wonder if anyone's hearing their complaints. It's really just a helpless feeling. Uh, we look at the reports rolling in over homeless camps and just how the city's responded. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a look at the forecast, Chris. And let's check out a spectacular sunrise. I'll step out of the way. Check that out. That is from our Stoller Vineyard camera in Dayton. You can see the silhouette there of Mount Hood off to the east and uh, a glowing Cascade Peak this morning and that well I didn't want to show you that that's old <laughs> but I can tell you that the sky is clear up over the Cascades this morning and here's a live look from Aurora City Sky Camera it's a little chilly it's 47 last check at PDX waking up to 40 right now in Hillsboro it's 38 in Sherwood it's 36 in King City so there are some cool pockets even here in the Willamette Valley this morning we hop over the Cascades Baker City and Rome right now the cold spots on the map across Oregon Check it in with 30 degrees. All right, the plan for today, plenty of sunshine early on. Few clouds pop up this afternoon. Shower chance? Maybe. For most of us, no. But I will break that down in more detail in just a second. We do climb into the 70s today, and I think, Tim, this is the beginning of several days in the 70s. More on that in just a little bit. Okay, Chris, thanks a lot. Look forward to that. Well, our top story this morning, a teenager has been charged in the murder of 13-year-old Milani uh, Milana Lee, pardon me, her body was found in a park in Beaverton last week. Our Alma McCarty learned more about the suspect who was out on probation. As the days pass, a memorial grows on Southwest Barrows Road in Beaverton. Flowers, balloons and messages of remembrance for 13 year old Milana Lee. It's obviously a tragedy to hear about. Lee was last seen at her apartment in the Murray Hill area on May 8th. Her mother reported her missing the following day. On May 10th, Beaverton police discovered her body in a small stream in a park nearby this intersection and not far from her home. Brad Day lives in the area. Just so horrible to have that happen to somebody that age. That may anybody, but especially a young life just getting started. The state medical examiner ruled Lee's death a homicide. Now, less than 10 days later, 16-year-old Daniel Gore faces murder charges for her death. Partially, it's relief knowing that, you know, they've made an arrest. Uh, but the other part is, you know, 16-year-old, it's... It just expands the tragedy more. On Friday, Gore was charged with first degree murder in Washington County Juvenile Court. According to the Oregonian, Gore has a criminal history, which includes trying to set a movie theater on fire. County officials confirmed the teen had been on probation for arson and theft charges. The Oregonian also reports the deputy DA told the judge Friday that Gore had been released into the custody of his family in Salem in February, but then he ran away from home in April and had likely been staying in Beaverton. Prosecutors had asked the court to keep him in detention, but the county juvenile department recommended his release. County officials released a statement that reads in part, the Washington County Juvenile Department is committed to its mission of holding youth accountable and teaching them the skills they need to be safe, contributing members of the community and remains committed to doing everything it can to keep our community safe and to support and restore victims in their healing process. Alma McCarty, KGW News. All right, let's get you caught up on this morning's other headlines. Deputies have a suspect in custody accused of firing shots outside Clackamas Town Center Mall last night. The sheriff's office says the shooting happened in the parking lot, but they didn't find any victims at the scene. Some people who were in the mall at the time report being on lockdown as police secured the area. We don't know yet what led up to those gunshots. And hundreds of students took over the streets of Portland Friday. They walked out of class as part of a climate strike. The march snaked its way from City Hall downtown to Revolution Hall in Southeast. 
The students' list of demands includes more green infrastructure, less freeway expansion, and divestment in fossil fuels. On Friday, staff shortages forced a school district in Portland to call off classes. Elementary and middle schools were unexpectedly closed to students in the Reynolds district. The district says it plans to close again on Friday next week. It's blaming a combination of illnesses, staff on vacation, and a shortage of substitute teachers. Reynolds High School remained open. And those are your Saturday morning headlines. Well, we often hear from neighbors complaining about homeless camps that make them feel unsafe. And the city of Portland gets an earful, registering hundreds of complaints each week. But the problem is there's such a backlog, it can take a long time for the city to respond. Blair Best spoke with some neighbors in southeast Portland who say they feel hopeless. It's really just a helpless feeling. At first glance, this neighborhood in southeast Portland right off of Powell Boulevard seems quiet and quaint. But this is one of the good days. Very loud fight, fighting. Um, it's not all the time, but it's happened three times most recently last Thursday. Homeless camps, mainly RVs driven by those experiencing homelessness, park along these streets for months at a time. It's just a little frustrating. Libby Brawlier has lived here for two years. She's afraid of leaving her property unattended and walking alone at night. I just feel uneasy. That's that's probably the long and short of it. Last week, the city received 1,803 campsite reports. They observed 385 of them and met with the campers at another 593. 16 were cleaned and 43 completely removed. The city's impact reduction team declined to go on camera, but says they prioritize the sites that pose a safety and health risk, meaning the camps in this neighborhood are most likely at the bottom of that list. Just today walking here, we saw a guy just in a towel outside of the, of the RV, just cursing and pans of, of human excrement and urine. We've seen a lot of bags of garbage. People in this neighborhood reported the camps to the city multiple times, but nothing's changed. Why aren't there resources to, to help this situation? Like, it feels like it's been going on for so long and just, you know, driving home to and from home down Powell every day and seeing people living there for months and months. That's scary to think about that perhaps we'll never get back to a point where it seems or feels or looks manageable. Blair Best, KGW News. And while we continue to look into the issues that come with some homeless camps, we're also highlighting challenges those without a home face each day. Now, in case you've missed it, you can now watch the KGW documentary One Day on our YouTube page. Our team of investigative journalists spent 24 hours telling the stories of life on the streets to show the scope and the impact of the problem here in the Rose City. Well, next, the World Health Organization is making headlines. Rumors are circulating that the WHO could take control of the U.S. if there's another pandemic. In three minutes, our Verified team explains why that claim just isn't true.